Hi, welcome to the Holiday Park United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Pat Nelson. It's good to have you here. Come on in and look around. We have a lot of great people who love Jesus and are growing in their faith. We would love to have you join us for worship and join us in serving the Lord. It's good to be with you this morning. We had a big crowd at the 830 service. Our outdoor services will be uh, coming to a, a conclusion soon. We only have a few of those left, but we're glad that you're here, whether you're watching uh, online or are here in person, it's always good to gather as the body of Christ. Mr. Ed's feeling under the weather right now, so I will be sharing uh, those announcements with you. You can always see what's going on on our church uh, webpage, and that's holidayparkumc.org. You can check us out there. And our Holiday Park Happenings announcement sheet that you can pick up on the way in lets you know all of the events that are coming as well. The big news is our, our administrative assistant position has been filled. You will find out the details next week, but we will no longer be asking you if you know somebody, have them apply. We do have somebody who has been offered the position. She has accepted that. Her first day on the payroll will be next Sunday. Her first day in the office will be next Tuesday because of Labor Day weekend. Uh, so you will have opportunity to have someone um, answering the phone other than me or Mr. Ed or the answering machine. There will be a live person here starting August 3rd. Operation Christmas Child. We are having our feature every month. This month is in August, we are still taking back to school supplies for the shoe boxes. Starting next month will be personal care and hygiene, things like washcloths, toothbrushes, combs, that sort of thing, in order to put in the shoe boxes. That will be starting in August. For right now, though, we are still taking back to school supplies because school has started and people are going back, so this is the perfect time to purchase those. The church directory photo opportunities are still there, September the 15th and November 3rd. The sign-up sheets are there. You'll be able to sign up if you have not already and you will receive an electronic copy of the picture that you take. So sign your family up, sign yourself up. We're having some conversation about an additional date in October that's in the middle of the week. That has not yet been confirmed, so be sure to sign up for one of the two Sundays in September or November. Club 56 and the youth group will be at Vaughn and Marilyn Ramel's this coming Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. While we have asked for reservations in order to have enough food available, um, if you know of somebody who would still want to go, please let me or Becky Hyland know. We can take a few extra people. Uh, let us know if you are interested in that. Bible studies will be coming up. The Tuesday morning Bible studies at, uh, on September 10th is with Karen Schrader. That book is called Hidden. That will start at 9.30 in the morning, September 10th. September 11th, Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock, Daring Women of the Bible, Lois Lawrence will be leading that one. Friday, September 6th will be the men's Bible study morning. Uh, Roger Rathburn will be leading a study on the Gospel of Matthew. So that one will come first, then the two women's Bible studies, and then Wednesday evening, September 11th, will be a uh, mixed study, men and women both, even kids, uh, youth are welcome to attend that. Christiana's Journey, that's the sequel to Pilgrim's Progress, that will be Wednesday, September 11th, 6.30 to 8.30. My husband and I will be leading that one. Over in Murraysville is a piano recital. We've been invited to attend that. We coordinate with Murraysville first in a lot of different activities, our trip to Philippi, our youth group events, a number of different things we synchronize with Murraysville. And this coming up will be September 8th at one o'clock, a piano recital. Matt Diesel is their choir director, and he will be having this recital of hymns and, and other kinds of music. And he will be taking requests 
for a fee. Uh, $5 for request donation, and that donation supports the church's music fund. So you're welcome to attend that. It'll be a time to uh, sing along and listen and be participating in that recital on September 8th at 1 o'clock. So we've had two uh, deaths that have affected our congregation. Uh, the first one is Valerie Sims. You may know the Sims family, her husband Gary, and her brother-in-law Jim is the fire chief for the Plum, or for the Holiday Park uh, Fire Department. Valerie passed away on Thursday evening, and the service will be held on Tuesday at 10.30 at the Knee Funeral Home. Uh, calling hours are tomorrow from 2 to 8. So any of you who remember Valerie and her husband Gary and Jim, uh, they're all members of the church. Uh, they have participated in things over the years. Valerie passed away uh, on Thursday. That service will be Tuesday. Also, uh, Scott Anderson, uh, who is here with us today, his sister-in-law, Susan, passed away, uh, I believe that was last night, uh, pretty re uh, Saturday night uh, is when she died. Is that right, Scott, last night? Um, her husband, Keith, um, is, is coping, uh, but please keep Keith and Scott and their family in your prayers. Uh, those are two difficult times, uh, people dearly loved. Uh, please, please pray for their families. As we go before the Lord in prayer, I invite Jeff to come up front and share with us uh, in the call to worship. God's Spirit leads, believes in the way of the truth. God's Spirit opens our eyes to behold the power of God. May we listen as God's Spirit opens our ears and minds and hearts to God's promises. May God bless our hearing and acting Please remain standing as we sing together hymn 89, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
please play with, pray with me. Wonderful, Wonderful living God, God, come to us now, even, even as your Son came and invited those from all walks of life to believe in you, to love you, and to live a faithful obedience to you. Speak your peace to our hearts. Touch us with your Holy Spirit. Reveal your word, that we may hear your message. And live as your disciples today. And in the days and years of In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Listen to God's words that it comes from the New Testament, Revelations 3, 7 through 13. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and when he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door, and no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and claim to be Jews. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of the heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the word of God to the people of God. Be to God. So what happened this week? What happened with you? I'm getting my ears pierced. You're getting your ears pierced. But they look nice. What happened with you this week? You got a phone. I'm so sorry. <laughs> getting a phone is going to change your life forever. Uh, what happened to you this week? You did what? Football game. Football game. Are you in it? You're one of the play, play, position. Quarterback, Quarterback and safety. Okay, great. Hope you do well. How about you? Football game. football game. Are you a football player too? What position do you play? Quarterback. You're quarterback too. Do you like go against each other or anything like that? Okay, that's good. So, did school start this week? Yeah. yeah. Not for you? When do you guys go to school? September 2nd, you have a whole week to wait. Good for you. What grade are you going to be in? Third? Sixth? Fourth grade? Third grade? Okay. Do you like to learn new things? Depends on what it is. What's your favorite subject at school? Jim? Jim, how about you? Art? Okay. Ma math. Well, I'm glad. We need people who like math. I never liked math very much. Never did very good. I do have some good memories of school. I had some teachers who really helped me and they encouraged me when I couldn't understand math and make sense of those goofy numbers. I was able to be in some school clubs after school. Do, you, do your schools have clubs? No clubs after? Yours does? Okay. Um, those helped me to make new friends. And I learned to read in school and to write. I even learned a little bit of math. And I learned geography and history. And when I was older, we had shop class where we made things out of wood and metal. And I learned how to cook there. That's about all the learning I did with cooking. My poor husband has to really cook for himself. But there were days that I did not want to go to school. And there were classes that I didn't like very much. But I made it through. 
and I found out that learning new things and taking on new challenges can be fun and they also take some work. So when you're facing some hard things in art class or in math class, hang in there and you'll do your best at that. Now, last Sunday, I said that a good way for us to pay attention to God was to talk to him first thing in the morning and say, thank you, God, at least three times during the day. So what are some, what are some ways you can say thank you to God? What can you thank God for? Can you think of one? What? Giving you clothes that you can wear, sure. What else? Food. What can you thank God for? How about the guy sitting next to you? You can thank God for him. Yeah, for your brother. Yeah? For family. How about you, Ethan? For your house? Sure. Those are all good ways for us to say thank you to God. Your teachers and your coaches, when you say thank you to them, they'll notice that you were paying attention and they'll be glad when you say thank you to them. Your parents and your friends are glad when you say thank you to them because they know that you noticed they did something nice. But thank you, saying thank you to God lets God know that you're glad to be with God and glad that God's with you each day. So let's have a prayer now. Thank you, God, for the people that you give us to help us and encourage us. Thank you for being with us every day to help us stay close to you. And we ask, Lord, that you help us to have a good week this week and help us to do our best at home and at school or wherever we are so that we learn what you want to teach us and so that we can fit into your plans for each of us. Thank you for the people that you give us to teach us and encourage us and help us to grow and learn to be more like you. Lord, help us to have a great day today and open our eyes to see all of the ways we can say thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's always a pleasure when Bruce brings special music for us today. And I'm sure that God will touch your heart and your life through Bruce's special music this morning. I regret the hours I have wasted and the pleasures I have tasted that you were never in. And I confess that though your love is in me, it doesn't always win me when competing with my sin. And I repent, making no excuses. I repent, no one else to blame. And I return to fall in love with Jesus, I bow down on my knees, and I repent. I lament the idols I've accepted, the commandments I've rejected to pursue my selfish need. And I confess I need you to revive me, put selfishness behind me, and take up my cross again. And I repent making no excuses I repent no one else to blame and I return 
to fall in love with Jesus, I bow down on my knees. And I return to fall in love with Jesus. I fall down on my knees and I repent. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. In an attitude of repentance, let us go before the Lord. Lord, thank you for this time to worship you. Thank you for all of the reasons you give us to say thank you. Thank you that you are always with us and you never leave us alone. Thank you for this opportunity to repent without excuse but to confess our sins and know that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for helping us grow closer to you. Thank you for this opportunity to worship you and follow you with our hearts and with joy-filled lives. Lord, please hear us as we pray. We confess that sometimes we don't want to follow you. Sometimes it seems like following you brings criticism and complaints from other people. And since we want to fit in, we think it's easier to go our own way. Sometimes we are so distracted with other responsibilities that we get overwhelmed. And we can't seem to find the time to put you first. We confess that sometimes hanging in there with you is, is just too hard. Please forgive us. Please forgive us for sometimes wanting to give up on you and to give in to other people. Thank you, Lord, for never giving up on us. Please help us to have a good attitude and help us to always look to you for help in doing our best each and every day. Lord, for those people we know who are sick or who are struggling, we ask for your healing hand to be upon them. Give the doctors and nurses and medical teams your wisdom and the best treatments. Please heal them inside and out. For those who are suffering with grief, please hold them and comfort them. Please give them your perfect peace especially for Scott Anderson's family and for the Sims family. Please hold them tight and let them know that you walk with them through these dark days. For those who are trying to sort out the confusion in their lives or who are faced with some difficult decisions, Lord, please surround them with your Holy Spirit and lead each one closer to yourself in your perfect plan for them. Give them your wisdom. Light their steps, one step at a time. Heavenly Father, please strengthen your church. Strengthen Christ followers everywhere who celebrate their place in your body, the church. Help us to walk with your Holy Spirit into each new day. And Lord, please give each of us the blessed assurance that because of Jesus, our salvation is secure. Help us to live out and work out our salvation each and every day by keeping us on the right track of faithful love and obedience to you so that we can become more and more like you. Please lead our president and the government leaders and in this tumultuous time in which we live, please help the Christians in this country to turn to you in repentance. 
Help us to turn to you for direction. There's so much for us to be praying about. Help us to stand firm on your promise that you are in control and we know that you want us to care enough to pray for your will to be done in our lives and in the lives of people around us and indeed in your world. Please protect the Jewish people from their many enemies and please bless the land of Israel and the lands around Israel with your peace. In the midst of the tragedies that we hear about in the news, please be with the people involved. Please bring salvation to those who are separated from you and in every situation, Lord, please bring honor and glory to your righteous name. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And please bless us as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught all of us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We live in a day and an age where there are many demands for our time and our attention and our money. Our tithes and our offerings are the evidence of our love for God and of our trust in God to provide for us. It's our way of saying thank you to God. It's our way of saying to God, I trust you to provide for me. And all the ministries of our church, all of the outreaches, all of the Bible studies, are ways that we here at Holiday Park let people know and let God know that we trust God and we love God and with God's help we will continue to live each day obediently and faithfully as Christ followers to God's glory. At this time I invite the ushers to please collect our tithes and offerings. <laughs> Lord, we do praise you. We are grateful for who you are, for all that you are, for all that you invite us to be and help us to be by the power of your spirit. We ask, Lord, that you bless these tithes and offerings for the, to your glory and to the furtherance of your kingdom on earth. And may your will be done starting in our lives and continuing on throughout the world. Bless these tithes and offerings in all that they are used for so that your name is lifted up. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we sing together, Open My Eyes That I May See.
You may be seated. Today, as we continue our series on the churches in the book of Revelation and the letters they received from Jesus, today we will examine the letter that was written to the church in the city of Philadelphia. The name Philadelphia means brotherly love, and like the city of Philadelphia that we know over in eastern Pennsylvania, this particular city was a city of commercial importance and influence. This letter that we'll examine today stands apart from the other letters that we've looked at over the last five weeks. There were no reprimands and no warnings from Jesus in this letter to the church at Philadelphia. In this letter, Jesus had only words of encouragement to the congregation, encouragement to stay faithful as they had been doing. As you read through this letter, Jesus does not have a single complaint about this congregation of Christ followers. Jesus assures them that since they have kept his commandments, Jesus will keep, him, keep them and Jesus will also honor them. The previous five churches, Jesus had told them in one way or another they needed to clean up their act. But Jesus tells the church at Philadelphia, good job, just keep up the good work. In this particular letter that we read, earlier in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus tells the church about the door of our heart which we can open to Jesus, invite Jesus in, and receive salvation from Jesus. When Jesus walked this earth, he was very upfront. He was upfront with people who were considering their eternity in heaven. And Jesus said that a personal relationship with him, with Jesus, is the only way to heaven. In fact, in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 14, if you look at this in both the New King James Version and the RSV, Revised Standard Version of the Bible, Jesus says it this way, Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, and there are few who find it. God's offer of salvation is open to all people who would receive it. Jesus knows that only a few will be persistent enough to be overcomers along the journey to heaven. The narrow gate, the difficult way, those are an attitude. An attitude is everything. Always staying ready to repent of our sins before God, that's the more challenging way to live. People who love challenges, people who love to solve puzzles or to work hard on a project until they get it just right and see it through to completion, those are the people who see problems to be challenges to be overcome. Those are the people who have the mindset of being overcomers, and those people with that mindset are wonderful candidates for following Jesus. Do you know anybody like this? Somebody who appreciates a good challenge. In John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. That's the end of the quote. Through our troubles, in the midst of our troubles, Jesus will turn Christ followers into overcomers. In the midst of your challenges and troubles, Jesus will turn you into an overcomer. In Revelation chapter 3:12, Jesus says, "To him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God." When we honor God by just doing our best, 
God honors us, and we become overcomers. About three years ago, my husband and I went to the Loke Lanes bowling alley down at the bottom of Mossai Boulevard. And while we were there, I noticed that there was a big sign up on the wall. And I asked the manager about it, and he said he put the sign up because there had been some complaints about the way the bowling lanes were being maintained. And the bowling alley posted a sign that said, winners adjust to conditions, losers complain. And I said, so what was the response of the sign? And he said, the losers complain. <laughs> now, I've seen people in terrible situations, much more terrible than the way a bowling alley is being maintained. I've seen people suffering with terrible sickness, difficult family situations, even embarrassing and humiliating situations. And some of them complain. And yet, in my conversations with people, there are others, a few others, who thank God. They have cultivated the habit of thanking God for everything. Their mindset has changed to adjust to the conditions, and they count their blessings each day. And for them, the sign at the bowling alley, the sign that says winners adjust to conditions and losers complain, these people, that sign says life is only hard when you complain. They've adjusted their attitude to be grateful to God. And what they found out and what others have found out is our grateful to God attitude is everything and makes all the difference in the world. When God sees our grateful attitude, when God hears us say thank you, even when things are not going our way, then it's like the light of God's smile lights up the world for us to see God's blessings all around us. Once we begin to see God's blessing, God opens our eyes to even more blessings. It's then that the joy of the Lord becomes our strength and we can face anything. Even when we have to face something alone, we are not alone. We have a helper. God is with us. Every Christian has to decide that the Bible is true and that the promises of heaven are for real. Jesus is not an attitude. Jesus is for real. And so I would encourage you that if you're feeling overwhelmed and you're feeling all alone, or if you're having trouble with a grateful attitude, if you're having trouble seeing the blessings of God that are all around, it could be that you need to get back on track with Jesus. Here's the short version of getting started with Jesus. First of all, we have to decide that what Jesus says is true. Am I a sinful person? Not before other people, but am I a sinful person before God? Are there sins that I want to be saved from? Are there sins that I need to be saved from? And is Jesus really the only way for me to be saved from my sins? Each one of us have to decide that what Jesus says is true. The second thing is, if we decide that Jesus is telling the truth, if we decide to accept God's invitation, we must agree that Jesus is the only way that we can be saved from our sins. Jesus is the narrow gate that we must enter through to walk with God. And third, our actions and our words prove that we are serious about a personal relationship with Jesus. People will see through our attitudes and through our actions that God is working in us and through us. 
Each one of us have to work out our salvation through our prayers, through involvement in Bible studies, through Sunday worship with others, by being willing to help with the ministries of the church, by our overcoming the challenges, by our being serious about a personal relationship with Jesus, people will see the difference in our attitude that God is making. Our attitudes are the greatest evidence that we have a new heart and a new life because of our relationship with Jesus, a personal relationship with Jesus that we are willing to live into and work out day by day. John chapter 1, verse 12 is where Jesus says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I found that once we accept Jesus on Jesus' terms, God gives us the right to become children of God. Becoming a child of God is not an overnight event. Becoming a child of God is an exercise in the power of God that results in us being saved moment by moment and day by day. It's a process. It's a lifelong process. It's a lifelong attitude. And we hang in there and do what we can with God's help. The devil doesn't like it when we turn to Jesus. The devil will do everything possible to trip us up and separate us from God. Don't let Satan cheat you out of the blessings that come with your new birth certificate just because you're tired or discouraged or frustrated or because someone in the church has hurt your feelings. Sometimes getting our feelings hurt or being tired or frustrated or discouraged is part of the process of becoming a child of God. In Revelation chapter 3, 9 that Jeff read earlier, we are reassured that Jesus knows that there will be people that we know who are unbelievers. There will be people who cross our paths who are hostile towards Jesus and the life he commands us to live as Christ followers. Sometimes those believe, unbelievers are part of our families or part of our circle of friends or people that we work with or go to school with. They go around saying, I can't follow Jesus and you can't either. Look at all the problems. Look at all the mistakes. They may even tell you that Jesus doesn't love you. They may even say that because you're going through a particular situation, that's evidence that you're not a Christ follower. Jesus says to them in Revelation 3, 9, I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Unquote. That's a promise that a Christ follower can stand on. Don't let someone else's confusion or unbelief get you off track in your love for Jesus. Take heart. Jesus is with you and will help you. When we are wronged because of our love for Jesus, God promises to set things right. There's some scripture. There are some people who think that God doesn't have the right to judge anyone and some scriptures to prove them wrong and to prove God's power and authority. Come here. Deuteronomy 32, 35 says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. In due time their foot will slip. Their day of disaster is near, and their doom rushes upon them. Psalm 7, 10 and 11 says, My shield is God most high, who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge. And Psalm 58, 10 and 11, the righteous will be glad when they are avenged, and surely the righteous still are rewarded. Surely there is a God who judges the earth. God promises to set things right for his faithful followers. 
Those scriptures promise us that those who stand patiently righteous before God will be rewarded when God judges the earth. If we turn aside and allow Satan to lead us or discourage honest Christ followers who are working to serve Jesus and, and stay faithful to Jesus, when, when Satan's trying to trip us up or other people are being used by Satan to trip us up, Jesus promises, I will make them come and fall at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. For those who like to see things set right, to those who appreciate a payday, what greater vengeance could we ever ask for? The Holy Spirit will strengthen your shaky knees, direct your steps, and even give you words to speak when the time comes. It's important to remember that Jesus will not keep us from suffering. As we work out our salvation, as we deal with the temptations and tricks of the devil, as we practice being faithful followers of Jesus, Jesus will not keep us from suffering. Jesus will not protect us from being questioned or, or challenged in our faith. Jesus does not eliminate the difficulties and the challenges in our life. What Jesus does is bring us through all of our challenges. Jesus will be and is the strength and the comfort in the midst of the day-to-day -day walk we have with him. And regardless of the people around us, we are commanded to be faithful to Jesus. We are commanded to keep God's word. We are commanded to not deny God's name. And we may have to adapt to the circumstances in this life. We may have to adjust ourselves to what's going on around us. But we do not, under any circumstances, have to conform to the patterns and the fashions of this world. We may need to adapt to what's going on around us but we do not have to conform. There's one sentence in this letter to the people of Philadelphia that I want to kind of sit on for a little bit and, and study for a moment. Revelation chapter 3.10 is where Jesus says this, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. That's the quote. The context of this letter to the church at Philadelphia and the context of this particular sentence has to do with the period of the tribulation that will come immediately after Jesus' physical return for his church. I believe that Further down in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verses 16 through 17, describes that tribulation during the hour of trial. And it goes like this. He, the beast, also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. That will be what's going on during the tribulation, during the hour of trial. Now, a global digital economy with no paper money is already technically possible today. Revelation 6.6 6 says, Then I heard what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures, saying, A quart of wheat, a quart of wheat for a day's wages, three quarts of barley for a day's wages, People are going to be hungry. And I pray that as Christ followers, we are out of here before that tribulation and hour of trial ever comes. The Bible is clear that when Jesus returns for his church, the Lord will initiate the trial, the hour of trial. And those who are left behind will go through that hour of trial. Those who have died in the faith, though, 
Those who meet Jesus in the air will be spared from the hour of trial that Jesus is talking about in this letter. They'll be spared. Revelation 3.10, Jesus said, Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. There are some people who take that verse out of context and they assume that once they believe in Jesus, they're spared from any kind of trial. They're spared from any kind of testing or temptation and the devil loves to run with that. When some people are dealing with grief or life-threatening illness or prayers that don't get answered, some people get angry at God and quit going to church. They jump to the very wrong conclusion that God has lied to them and does not care. And the devil runs with that. Where some people get confused is in the thinking that what God promises as a heavenly reward to be received when you arrive in heaven, they think that God will give them that reward now. Jesus said in John 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. What we go through in our lives, we can expect. We will have trouble. But Jesus has overcome the world. Everyone who is a Christian has to decide that the Bible is true and the promises of heaven are for real. And that decision becomes our incentive for hanging in there with Jesus. When we hang in there for Jesus, God makes us a victor in our situation. Even if the circumstances don't change, even if the prayers remain unanswered, even if nothing looks different on the outside, God makes you an overcomer. Those who practice a righteous lifestyle have a reward in this life that's, that's more valuable than any other reward we can ever receive. And that reward is the smile of God who creates in you a quiet conscience, a steady heart. The smile of God can make a grief-stricken heart become filled with a quiet joy in the light of God's presence and God's love. God's love cannot be killed. God's love for you cannot be stopped. Jesus rose from the grave. God's love never dies. And God holds you tight in his hands. Jesus promises to turn his people into pillars of strength as we stand firm in our love and obedience for Jesus. We can, too, persevere to the end. We can be as pillars of faith in Jesus, stable in our faith, immovable in our faith, secure in our faith. Our faith is in Jesus, and God can and does take our shaky faith and turn it into the rock of Gibraltar. God can use us to help those who are struggling and discouraged because we've been struggling and we've been discouraged and we have overcome that through Jesus. So God can use us to help others in that place. If we have faith, God will brighten the lives of other people by using our candles to light the way toward Jesus for those others who we know who are overwhelmed by the darkness in which they live. Jesus says in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, Jesus has overcome the world. Hallelujah. God makes us strong. Hallelujah. God makes us quietly confident. Hallelujah. 
to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord, as we sing your praise and celebrate your lordship, your godship, the salvation that you offer through Jesus. Help the hallelujahs come from our lips. Help the overcoming attitude that you give us be evident in all that we do. And we ask, Lord, that you make our mindset to be set on you and the victory that we receive only in Jesus. Help us to be faithful each and every day. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together our last hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King. place ready to hear that trump of God resound be steadfast be immovable in your faith always giving of yourselves generously to the work of the Lord knowing that your work and love for God is not in vain go in peace to love and serve our Lord amen